Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Christelle Rin, and I'm the COO here at HR Locker. Um, so for today's webinar, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be concentrating on those end of year reports um, from a HR perspective. So I suppose the data that you can access through HR Locker, but also that you should be looking at um, and what you should be doing with the data at this stage. Um, we're almost at the end of the year. So um, we have a question and answer section that is open to everybody. So um, as I go throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, please just put them into the questions and answers section and I'll try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, I have Carolyn with me today who will be um, kind of monitoring that section. So if she can give you a quick answer, she'll give you one. Um, and I'm happy to take questions as well um, towards the end or if anybody wants to book a call with me or anybody at the team as well, feel free. Um, so we're almost at the end of the, the year, um, so it's a quick year. So what I'd like to focus on first is just in regards to um, breaking down the um, the reports from an absence management side of things to training and development to your performance reviews um, and then from the hiring statistics as well that you can get um, for over the last 12 months as well. So if we go over here to, we're going to start first within HR Locker. I'm just going to switch screen there. <clears throat> so um, for those of you who are not using HR Locker, I'm just logged here into HR Locker into the dashboard. And um, those people who are administrators, administrators within HR Locker and or managers who have reports permissions, they can, you can, you'll have access to this reports tab here. So once you click into the reports tab, um, there are um, we've divided the reports into sections um, that reflect the module. So we've our time off reports, we've our time on reports, which is your clock in and out, your HR doc. So any um, documents that people have signed, you publish people. Employees is kind of an overview of all the employee data that you have. So in regards to the personal tabs, things like um, you know date of birth, um, terms of employment, things like that. CPD, so any of your training records, if that's what you're using, reviews, um, any of your appraisals and your payroll reports as well. I'm also going to spend a brief bit of time at, towards the end going through the higher reports as well, so your applicant tracking reports. But if we look first of all at the, in regards to the time off reports, so the very first thing I suppose people are going to be um, kind of concerned about towards this time of year is in regards to um, how many annual leave days, how many annual leave days do I have left? Um, what am I carrying over into next year? What holidays do I need to be booking um, over Christmas period if you're having a shutdown? So the very first, I suppose, downloadable report that you should be looking at is the annual leave summary report. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what that um, actually looks like. So is it a little bit of a here's when I prepared earlier. So in regards to the annual leave summary report, you're going to it, it gets emailed to you because it's quite a large report. And as you'll see, it'll come down in Excel and all your employee names will be here. Um, the office department start and end date, whether they're on um, an hourly uh, an hourly annual leave or a daily annual leave rate. But the most important, um, I suppose, row that you're looking at here is R, and that's versus your balance versus your full year. So this in effect is going to be, if you allow a carryover, it's going to be what's carried over into next year for employees. So it is their balance. So for example, if somebody has 20 annual leave days that's been assigned to them for this year, um, versus their full leave year. So for example, if somebody has 20 days assigned to them for this year and they've only taken 18 days annual leave, there'll be two here in the um, in the, the block over here, so in the cell. So that in effect is going to be your carryover for next year. The way the carryover works within the system is if you have a carryover leave policy that's set in your setting system, your setting section per office, that will kick in. So, for example, this person has 30 days annual leave. Um, if you have a five day, sorry, 30 days annual leave carryover, if you have a five day annual leave policy, it's going to kick in and that person is going to lose the 25 days. So, in regards to this side of things, you need to focus on. Um, I suppose communicating to your employees if it is going to be um, uh, if they're going to lose days, if you want to um, allow them to carry over additional days, the outside of carryover, this is where you need to spend a bit of time kind of making those decisions um, as a management team. So um, 
again, good good place to start looking if you even if you want to be able to have those conversations with people to say, you know, look, you actually have 10 days annual leave. You need to book them now or you're going to lose them going into next year. So um, just to have those conversations with people. Nice one here as well, just to give an overview in regards to each, employee, each individual employee um, to start look at the sick, their sick leave. So, for example, this person over this year has had 10 days sick leave um, and they've had 10 uncertified days. So maybe it's something just to have a look at to see, you know, why were they uncertified? Um, you know, what, what were the instances there as well? So just to get a, a kind of a, an overview of that. If, for example, you're going to be having discussions with people to say that, yes, you actually have 10 days annual leave within your own system, you only allow five to go over and you want to um, manually adjust somebody or allow them to bring over that carryover into next year, you're going to um, go into the person's time off, scroll the whole way down to manual adjustments and add that adjustment. So say, for example, somebody was carrying over, um, they had 10 days leave, carryover policy is five, you're allowing them to carry those five extra days over. You're going to put five days here, put in the effective date of being the 1st of January 2023 and just put a note in there saying, um, you know, additional days for 2023 versus carryover or whatever makes sense to yourselves. And if you submit them, those five days will come into effect in 2023 and they'll go into that column over here, the manual adjustment column. OK, so definitely, I suppose one of the biggest areas from an administration purposes when we're coming to the end of the year um, that uh, it's it, a lot of focus is on your annual leave. So lots of focus going on to the annual leave, making sure that your carryover policies um, are correct. Um, if your if your carryover policies are not correct um, and you want to change it, come and talk to us and we're we'll able to adjust that for you. Um, and just to kind of, I suppose, reiter reiterate everybody that if it's, this, is, this is your first annual leave change in HR Locker, what will happen is that um, once the 1st of January comes in, uh, their annual leave days will go back up, they'll go, to 20 days here, the carryover days, whatever is applicable will come in. Manual adjustments from 2022 will disappear, 2023 will come in, and obviously all their all their balances will go back up again. So it, we, you don't have to do anything. It's just the admin side of, of, go, of saying, OK, you know, what are we allowing people to carry over or not carry over? Is there discrepancies in anywhere if some, some returning to leave? Are we allowing people to carry over that kind of thing? Um, so important just to focus on that. Um, for those of you who haven't done this yet, um, in regards to your Christmas leave, if people are um, closing the company for um, over Christmas, then you're going to, and you haven't put in your mandatory Christmas days, to do that, you're going to go into the settings section over here, into offices. You're going to go into the office over here, press settings, go into time off, and put in your annual, your annual leave days here. Oh, I'm just going to find 2022 here. So, um, for example, if I want to create a, just going to add a company office day here, maybe I'm going to be closed on the 23rd. It could be a company day. Okay. And the decision you're going to make here is whether you're giving that day off to people as an annual leave day that's going to come out of their annual leave entitlement, or is it? Are you just giving them an extra day, and you know it's not going to come out of their entitlement? So you just submit there. If you want to flag it as annual leave, you submit it, and it'll go into everybody's time um, time off, and it'll be a manual day that that's been booked for everybody within the company. Another little bit of admin work that you want to do here as well. Um, in case you haven't done it, is that um, at the well every year you will need to download the public holidays for each office. So to do that, you're going to go into the settings, into your offices again, time off, and you're going to select the country that you're going to be downloading the annual leave days for, and press import, and that'll be all your 2023 day uh, 2023 public holidays will be imported then as well for everybody in regards to 2023. Just make sure that you're doing that kind of little bit of admin um, before going into next year. So I'll just pop back to the reports here as well again. So a couple of things that are, I suppose, an interesting overview if you want to um, have a look at a few things. I'm just going to open another page here to show you. Um, yeah, so we do have some visual reports here. So again, just to have a quick view, you can do this per, oops, sorry. 
um, per office department teams, all employees. So I'm in the whole company here. I can see there's 228 annual leave days left. So that's remaining for the whole year. So in effect, that uh, more than likely is going to be the carryover as a company that we're bringing over into into next year. So you can just go drill down then per office or department to see are there certain offices that may have may ha be having um, a carryover issue or maybe you know taking more days in than than you were expecting? Um, uh, yes, and there's just a, a question there in regards to is this being recorded? So yes, it's recorded and um, and we'll we'll send the webinar out to you afterwards. So um, so no problem. Uh, public holidays are available to import now, so they usually are available kind of around March time for this current year. So for the next current year, so um, you can download them now. Um, is no problem. Uh, so. You should be you should be downloading the, the public holidays now. I'm just going to just go through that one more time with you. If you go into settings here, into your offices, into the time off section here, select what country you want to download them for, and just press import, and they'll all come in then. Okay, so important you're doing that that now. So we'll go back to the reports here again. So if we're looking at the, the time off reports, the visuals, you can see the annual leave summary. This is the other leave. So it's all the different leave types that you have. And this is really just giving you a little snapshot in regards to seeing, do you have a problem with any specific leaves? You know, so do you have, for example, um, the compassionate leave? So, you know, are you giving a huge amount of compassionate days or is there a huge amount of parent leave or, you know, just in regards, is there any leave that you want to drill down more into? So it just gives a, a little bit of a snapshot in regards to, is there anything that you want to specifically look at? Um, sick days, another one to have a look at to see, you know, yes, everybody has sick days. Every company will have sick days, but are do you have an issue that sick days are being certified or uncertified? So just to keep it a little bit of a, again, an overview, you can do it per office to see, well, goodness, this office is having a huge amount of uncertified sick days in comparison to other offices. Um, so just to give that a bit overview. Sick days by day, I always think this is a nice one to look at at the end of the year, really just to see, do you have a sick day? Um, issue on a Monday and a Friday. Um, so Monday evening being um, being people uh, who haven't come to work after Sunday night um, or Friday that, uh, you know, maybe there's, there's a, a long weekend. So again, these really are just a quick over, over, overview or snapshot to see is there an issue that you need to look at further. Um, so the next thing I'm just going to have a look at here. So is all the downloads. So again, the main one that you want to look at is that annual leave summary. So that's the one that I spoke to you about there that'll give you your carryover um, for next year. Again, these are ones really just you want to have a quick look to see are things an issue. So um, you can look at uh, is there any um, awaiting approval that, ha that hasn't been done before the end of the year? So that's important that you want to have everything approved before the annual leave year finishes. Um, if you want to look at sick leave a little bit further, Interesting one to look at is your COVID-19 related sick leave. So, you know, that's still COVID is still around to see, do you have you had a number of sick days in regards to that? You know, is there is there a cost to it? Um, so then in regards to the Bradford factor, another interesting one to see if that is something that you're actually using. You can download the Bradford factor. Just give you an example of one here. Just one second. But I had all of these lined up for you. Let's just get that one up quickly. Here's the Bradford report. So you'll see then um, just in regards to it'll give you the, the report at the end here, just in regard, their, their Bradford factor score to give you just a little bit of that, I suppose, um, overview of who you want to look at, if it's an issue or not. Um, is there something you want to follow up with? I'll just have a quick look at the questions here just before I move on from the time off section as there's a number of questions going through. So um, the the questions specifically are in regards to the um, the public holidays. So yes, go in and download them now. Um, is there any downsides for annual leave carryover? So um, this really is extremely company specific. It depends on um, if if you have a huge carryover issue or not, um, if you 
I don't really see an issue in regards to people carrying over three or four days into into next year. Um, we've always had that policy. If there's somebody, I think the issue in regards to carry over, if somebody's carrying over 15 days into next year, the conversation should probably be why didn't they take those annual leave days um, this year? That should probably be more of the issue, uh, the, more of the conversation. Um, maybe there was a sick leave, uh, maybe they ran for sick leave or maybe they ran for maternity leave or something like that. But um, I suppose you don't want the majority of people taking over 10 days carry over into next Next year, um, you really want to give it just that they have those extra few days rather than that it's a huge, it's a huge issue. Um, is there any down? Okay, sorry, I've just done that one. Apologies. Um, if annual leave is not on a calendar basis, can you pull reports based on the 31st of December? Um, so yeah, there's a start and end date here. So these annual leave summary reports will always be um, in regards to your actual annual leave calendar year. So for example, if your annual leave calendar year starts in March or it starts in April, we have a couple of companies that start in September, that's what this annual leave summary will take into account. If you want to do it from a date range, you put in the date range here and you can download the old leave to give you that information as well. Okay. Um, does carryover need to be done manually for each employee? So if you have set a carryover policy in regards to your offices, so I'll just show you here, if you go into your settings so you can find out do you have a carryover policy into offices, into the time off section, scroll the whole way down, let me get keep going and there is a annual leave policy. So do holidays carry over and what's the what's the, the policy? So there's five days for this company. So have a check to see if you have an, a, a policy put in place per office. If you have that policy, there's no need to do anything manually. The system will just automatically do it. And that's why it's important just to double check to see if if you have employees who will be losing a number of days. So if you have people who actually have 10 days annual leave remaining towards the end of this year on the 1st of January when they come in they will have lost five days so just have a conversation with those employees to see um, if it's something that you want to address or not. Um, so the next question there is what is the Bradford factor? So the Bradford factor is a calculation that a number of companies use in regards to um, calculating not just the amount of sickness days but also the amount of sickness occurrences um, in a, over a 12 month period. So and it gives you then a score and the score you can decide basically is it a good or a bad score so you kind of weigh on just because somebody may have had um, for example 10 um, 10 days sick leave but was that 10 different occurrences and the 10 different occurrences have a look and see whether it actually on a Monday and that gives them a, a Bradford factor score. Um, I actually have a thank you Carolyn I can see you're replying there if you want to put the link there that would be perfect and you're ahead of me for for doing that so thank you. Um, do you have guidelines and thresholds for Bradford, uh, Bradford Factor or does it depend on the company? Kevin, I would say that there is lots of information in regards to the threshold. I always do think that it is per company personally. Um, Carolyn, you might put the link on that one there as well. Um, I do think that it is um, with the Bradford Factor, I think sometimes you get into the um, habit of making sickness being kind of just black and white where sometimes it's not. Sometimes somebody genuinely is sick and um, and you know, you maybe want to just investigate that further rather than just having a blanket. If somebody has a Bradford factor of 30 that they're getting, you know, that they're, they're that they're getting um, warnings and things of like that. So I would think it is a company policy. And then also that company policy should be um, shouldn't be black and white. It should actually be investigated per employee then as well. Um, but I would say lots of companies do have a black and white policy that, for example, if you're Bad factor is over 30, then you're 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 getting um kind of a written warning on that. So really it's depending on your own company. But Carol, I know you've given a link there, so maybe just have a look at that. Um, can you put max certified and uncertified sick leave in settings? So Brenda, you can't right now. What you can do is when you're um when you are somebody is recorded sick leave in the time off section here. Um I don't have an example out here, but you see the number of days paid so you can put in are they getting paid or not paid for that. Um, so that also just um, we might um, post a link to this as well is um, the don't forget the legislation coming in for next year just in regards to the mandatory paid sick leave um, for in Ireland. OK, so. Can I download the graphs? So in regards to the graph, so everything in in the reports here, you can um, you can download into Excel spreadsheet for the graphs. If you want to, you can just screenshot them to take them out. Um, and I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes towards the end to show how you can manipulate these graphs as well. If you want to connect it up to your Power BI as well. 
OK. Um, yeah, and so the, is there a report that calculates the absent rate percentage for a company? And I'll go through that in a little bit to show you how you can do that within your Power BI as well. So we're going to move over from the time off into the time on section. So the time on section is in regards to your um, your timesheet section. So um, what I would say in regards to your time on section, I'm just going to switch over to the other system here for a second. In regards to your time on section is important if you're using, if you're running payroll through HR Locker, you're running your payroll reports, important that if you're um, maybe running payroll early, early and you're going to be paying people on the 21st or whatever date you're going to pay them, that people have their timesheets submitted um, prior to the end of the year. Um, if they don't, you can use this include um, um, submitted but not improved. So, but really important that if you're going to be paying them for the month of December early, that you're getting them, that you're communicating to employees to maybe submit their timesheets now um, before the end of the year. A couple of nice reports to have a look at is the total hours reports. That just is in regards to showing people how many hours people have worked, keeping an eye on to see if people going over that the 48 hours. Um, you can do a monthly hours report as well. Um, overtime report is a nice one just to have a look and see are these issues or are these something that you want to look at. Um, and then the the rolling toil and the, the toil report as well is a nice way to have a look and see um, what toil people are, are bringing into next year. And unauthorized access um, absence reports. So, you know, that's your your uncertified days as well. So. But really in regards to time on, I think towards the end of this year, the most important thing that you're looking for is if you're using the payroll side of things that you are, um, that you're you're getting people to do their, their timesheets in a timely manner um, to make sure that they're getting paid for Christmas basically. Okay, um, please post any questions there in regards to time on. It's just that because I'm not going to spend a huge amount of, of time in there because I don't really think there's a huge amount of reports other than the payroll reports that you want to be looking at for this year and the overtime reports just maybe to see how much that's cost you um, this year as well. Um, we'll go to the next section here, which is the HR documents section. So this is where you're publishing documents to your um, to your individual employees or to offices as on a mass. And the main thing you're really going to be looking at here, sorry, I'm just messing around with screens here, is to see nice and clean towards the end of the year. You want to be make sure that all the documents that you have assigned um, have been have been signed by individuals. And I think that's that's the most important thing that you want to look at. Oh, I'm in the wrong screen altogether. It's almost the end of the year, so that's why my brain isn't working properly. <laughs> so um, you can have a quick quick over here, over here to see um, on the visual side of things who haven't signed reports. So you can see here all these people have not signed these these documents. So you can have a quick overview to see who hasn't and why have they not signed them. Um, and you can download these into an Excel spreadsheet here as well. So if you go into the multiple one here, you can download the signature list to see who are these little stragglers here who haven't signed the signatures yet. And also the single report here to see individual documents that have been published to people um, why who, who hasn't signed them as well. I do think this is a nice piece of admin work to be doing um, just towards the end of the year, just to make sure that all your handbooks assigned or your policies assigned, just to make sure that you're 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 finishing the the year on a on a good stance, basically. Okay. Um, next section here, we're flying the biggest section, I suppose, really, besides time off, is the employee side of things. So lots of information that you can see here. Um, I suppose number one that you're going to be looking at is if you want to look at the salary history to see how people increases or decreases, uh, presume no decrease, but let's say increases, um, bonuses. So how, mon how many bonuses have you paid out this year? Um, nice one here to have a look at then in regards to who's actually signed up for the pension. Um, right to work summary is a really good one. So if you're actually managing all the um, visas through the system here to download to see, well, what visas do I actually need to be looking at um, renewing for next year? So if you have people on critical skills visas or stamp or whatever it is, um, but sp specifically the critical skills, if you're going to be applying um, for renewal for next year, it takes, it takes a while to do that. So if you want to just get ahead of yourself to make sure that, that you're on top of everything um, and, uh, and, 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 and show that, I think is a, is a good way to do it. Um, Headcount, so you can put in your 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 time date here. So obviously first January to the end of the year, and you can put in your head your head count here just to see how you've been growing over over every month as well, um, which is a nice 
I suppose just give an end of year overview of, of where you've been at. MPS report. So for those of you who aren't using the Net Promoter Score, what it is is you can set it up to ask your um, your employees a question once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever it is, just in regards to, I suppose, the most typical question would be um, how likely would you be to refer um, your company to, to another um, person to work here? And then there's a scale of one to 10, and you can see is the employee kind of a promoter of the company or it's kind of a temperature check to see how um, how engaged they are, what in terms of their employee experience, are they happy to work here. So nice way to get your net promoter score as well and just kind of cap it off at the end of the year. Um, I think, oh yeah, COVID, I don't really think the COVID vaccine isn't um, applicable anymore. Pension participation report might be a nice one as well. But again, a lot of these really are just to have a quick overview to see, okay, this is towards the end of the year. And we'll, we'll tie it off in a if in a ribbon, off in a ribbon. Okay, so before just a couple of questions here. So, is there a report that I can run that shows those who haven't submitted timesheets, those that have submitted but not yet approved, and then those that are approved? So, in the timesheet report here, um, if you can put in here to include submitted but not approved, and that'll show you your your um, submitted and unsubmitted reports um, and then there's some nice visuals here that will show you what you're looking for as well over here so it'll show you your unsubmitted then ones here as well okay um i think that's the best one to have a look at yeah it'll show you your unsubmitted ones but now i don't have a lot of information in the system but it'll basically show you um the graph will show you all the submitted all the unsubmitted um but uh, definitely towards the end of this month, you should be looking at making sure that they're all submitted. Um, Kevin, I don't see a lot of the employee reports in our version. Any idea why? Um, my presumption, Kevin, is that you are not an administrator of the system. Um, yes, and thank you. If you want to touch base with Carolyn to figure out um, what access you have, but um, I would presume that you're not an admin and that you're just a manager of the system, and that's why you don't see all these reports. Um, because, but yeah, Touch base with Carolyn and she will she'll get back to you on that. OK, the next reports we want to be looking towards the end of the year is our CPD. So that's our training records. For me, there's two things that I suppose that want to concentrate on in our own company is download the training requests. So for us at the end of every year, um, what I at the end of our annual leave appraisals, what we would tell people is to go into HR Locker and request any training that they want to do for the rest of the year uh, for the next for next year. And that builds our training needs analysis then for um, for 2023. So it's an easy way to do it if, for individual employees that go into CPD here and they would say request my training. They request the training. They can either request it from the list of training that you have here or they can request new training. If they want to request new training, they have to do a bit of work for it. They have to put in, I suppose, the, the reason why they want to do it, what's the expected outcome, what's the expected cost, and that notification will go to their manager or their training manager um, to say that they've requested training. Um, to get people to do that, you can either, what we do here in our own company is at the end of every review, I tell people to go in and do that. Um, but if you want to do it on a mass way, you can go into requests and request training needs, and that will then go on to the whole company. They'll get an email saying, come into HR Locker and request the training that, that you'd like to do for next year. And that really just creates, I suppose, a bit of a temperature gauge in regards to what training people um, think they need for next year. So a nice way to, to do that as well, to kind of get prepared for that. Um, and then I think the, the most important one really is if you download the employee summary report, I'm just going to hopefully find this one here for you. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview of what that's the training requests that'll come through. If you want to have a look at it on Excel, there's also you can also see it within the system, but it's a nice Excel one there. Um, but if we download the employee summary, I suppose the main thing that you're looking for in the employee summary is to figure out what training is going to expire this year. Uh, well, in 2023. So you can um, you can filter it by date range and just select the training that's going to be going to expire in 2023 and that'll that'll kind of I suppose decide a lot on what training you're going to need for um to plan for 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 2023 so there's the report there and you'll see there's the expiry date there so if i just take the expiry dates for 2023 i can see that this training is going to expire 
and um, obviously depending on your own company will it be need to be booked for next year or not okay um, CPD hours achieved as well that's kind of a bit industry specific to see if that's something that you're monitoring or not in regards to um, in regards to to the industry that you're working in regards to the CPD hours achieved um, the next section here is the uh, review section. So a um, couple of bits that I like to focus on here is the incomplete review. So obviously, even within our own company, we want all um, reviews to be completed by the end of the year. So if I download the incomplete reviews, I can see um, who who is still yet to complete the reviews, who hasn't been scheduled as well. Um, and then I, by the end of the year, what I like to look at is the performance metrics. We use metrics here in regards to, um, I suppose, um, behaviours um, analysis. So we, we look at that and I can just see for each employee, what does the metrics actually look like? OK. Um, payroll. So presumably everybody will be who is using payroll will be doing a payroll run um, at the end of the, the month. If you're going to be doing it early, again, just important to make sure that people have put in their timesheets um, and that you're telling them to, to put in their timesheets and save and submit them before um, before you run the report. So they're the they're the main HR locker reports. I'm just going to um, jump over to the hire reports then as well, just to show you in regards to um, what data you can get from hire as well. So um, I suppose the couple of things that I like to look at. So after we've done a we've done a lot of recruitment this year. So over the last 12 months, what I really want to focus on is how long it took for us to hire somebody, how long it took for us to, once somebody came in to interview them, and I can get that information here. So on average, it's taking about 36 days to hire somebody from application, um, and then 41 days, which I would be wondering why is it taking after I've hired somebody, why is it taking somebody 41 days to go to the next level? So just to kind of understand that. The next bit is to you can drill down per job or as an overview of what kind of avenues are really kind of working for you. So especially if you're paying for job boards or you're paying for promotion, you want to see exactly what areas are actually working for you or not. So what I like to look at, for example, this job here is that the biggest response we're getting from Twitter. I'm always a little bit surprised, to be honest with you, how many uh, responses we get from Twitter, um, but it's a it's a it's a really interesting way to, to do that. Um, and you can see specifically, you know, if you're paying for Indeed or you're paying for LinkedIn or you're paying for jobs or whatever it is you're paying for, just to see um, over the time period you know, are you getting um, are you getting any more out of it? Or if you've done a social media campaign or something like that, were you getting more traffic? What worked and what didn't work really is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so they're the so they're nice kind of jobs to have. So nice kind of reports to have a look at. You can change the date range here um, to get a yearly overview as well. Um, so the last bit I'm just going to go into, then I'll go to all the questions, is in regards to if anybody is using, has connected your HR lock or hire into your Power BI, just to show you what reports that you can pull out there then as well. So this is a, just a report that I have put into Power BI. Um, and so for those of you who are using Power BI who are, or who aren't aware of it, it's really just a case of taking the HR locker data and manipulating it into being into getting the information that you want. So whatever it is that you're looking for. So these are just some examples that I've made. So in regards to how many active hires I have had um, this year, how many new starters, how many leavers I've had, um, the gender balance um, between uh, male and female, um, hire by sector, um, higher by age. So just an interesting one to see, you know, kind of an age bracket where are we hiring most people into? Am I mostly hiring full time people or people on fixed term contracts? Um, hires by country. Um, you know, over the last 12 months, when when are the when am I hiring the most people? What offices are hiring the most people? Um, in regards to starters and leavers, you know, am I hiring more people than that are leaving or rebuilding or 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 um, downsizing and then hires by gender so that there is actually a gender pay gap report that I didn't go into I'll go into in a second so again if you're looking at kind of taking the data from HR Locker and trying to manipulate it into getting specifically what you want um, I would uh, happy to discuss with anybody about how to take that data and put it into your Power BI um, and uh, and kind of um, getting exactly what you're looking for out of that. Um, before I pop off, I'm just going to, um, because I forgot to go into the gender pay gap reporting. So that is in here. Apologies. So 
it's here in the employees section. Oh no, it's not. It's in the um, reports. OK, so you can see your gender balance here. And then here's your gender pay gap report as well. So it is uh, mandatory for certain companies, um, but I would always say for those companies who it's not mandatory for, it's still a nice one to see where you actually are in regards to the gender pay gap. So you can do it in regards to absolute or percentage based. So you have to report in these kind of things, average or the median and overall or quartile. So the quartiles being per quarter. So this is the this report here actually is the report that you're going to be um, giving um, if you if you mandatory have to report on your, your gender pay gap. So nice way to do that here as well. So I'll just pop over to a couple of the questions. I see Carolyn, you're doing um, most of the question, the answers here. So what is Power BI? So Power BI is a Microsoft reporting tool. Um, so it is um, you would connect it to your HR Locker database. Um, we would give you a copy of the database and then you would create your own customizable reports through your own Power BI. Um, the nice thing about that is you may be using other data sources. So for example, you could be using your payroll or you could even just be using your Office 365 data and you can cross report on both of the on all those those informations as well. So but if you want to um, get in touch with us about that, please do happy to go through it with anybody. Um, OK, uh, we have the so next question. We have a separate training leave type set up, but it's, is it better to do it via the CPD feature? Um, so I wonder when we might go through a call with that. So you can create a training leave type and that will be um, that will record their their training days, I suppose, and their, their timesheet. Um, what I would still get people to do an overall side of things is when they're recording their training to put in the amount of days that they did so that you can also do the um, report on the on the hours achieved. But um, if you want to contact, they might go through exactly exactly what you're looking for. If that makes sense. Um, can you set carry over to expire on a set date, i.e. The, fir the first quarter? So no, you can't. You're going to have to manage that yourselves. You just have a discussion with people. And I think that that's the important part of saying that, you know, if somebody's bringing over 10 days into 2023, um, you know, that's when you're kind of focusing on that they have to take them within the first quarter. Um, you know, just myself, if somebody's bringing in one or two days, I'm happy for them to take it over the next 12 months. But no, right now you can't set it per quarter. OK, so um, I think that's all the questions. I'm just going to go through them all. So I've done the Power BI one. Um, Carolyn, you've answered this one. Is there a report that I can run that shows those who haven't submitted timesheet? Oh, so you've answered that. So the seven day timesheet report, timesheet and project report will have a list of all unsubmitted and timesheet reports. And I'll just show you where that is actually. So in regards, if you go to reports, you go into time on. Oh, it's not. It's yeah, into time on and the seven day timesheet and projects report is here. So that'll give you the the unsubmitted report. So very important, I suppose, that you're making sure you're doing that. So I think that's the end of um, all our questions. Hopefully that was um, informative to people. Um, if anybody has any questions or if they're not 100 percent sure um, in regards to um, to anything I've gone through, please feel free to um, to come back and ask us and we can go through it. I'm just concerned, uh, conscious, I suppose, when we come into the end of the year, most of the questions that we get is um, is the downloading the public holidays. So make sure you're going in and doing that now, setting up any company leave that people are, will be taking over Christmas, any mandatory company leave, and that um, if you have your carryover set, there is nothing that you need to do. It, everything will turn over into the 1st of January 2023. Everybody's leave should 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 follow over. Actually, before we go, I might just I'm I'm going to ask answer this question, but I'm also going to just show you if you want to increase people's leave. So um, just answer this question quickly. So regarding Power BI and getting a copy of the database, can we point by Power BI at our live date in the HR Locker Cloud, or could we set up a live sync? So we would give you we would data warehouse, so we would give you a copy of your your data your data in HR Locker. Um, typically for companies, we update it once every 24 hours. Um, we do have companies who do it um, kind of every hour, uh, but typically for companies, we would update it 24 hours, so it would sync with the live data. Okay. So just before um, I pop off, um, just in regards to anybody who will be increasing people's annual leave for next year, if you go into the directory, um, we'll just select this person here, and you edit their annual leave days, and you will um, add a new holiday entitlement. So you add a new holiday entitlement, 
OK, and you'll see here um, to change. You see here automatically it's come from the date of the 30th of November. If you want to change that, you're just going to put it in here. And put it in for the so you'll be able to change it when the 1st of January comes in and put it in for the 1st of January. It'll 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 be live then for the 1st of January. Um, same as that for the comps and bends. If you're giving somebody a salary increase, if you want to add or so you'll go into the directory, choose the person, go into comps and bends, put in their salary increase effective from um, 2023, 1st January 2023, and it'll automatically be effective from that date. Um, so, okay. Okay, and it'll automatically be effective from that date. Um, OK, so um, uh, if I cut off payroll on the 19th of December, how are hours worked after that in 22 recorded for accrued hourly holidays in 2023? So uh, once they submit their annual, their um, their timesheets, their holidays will accrue into 2023. Regardless, of, once they press submit, it'll automatically go into 2023 even if they submit their timesheet today, basically. So, um, but just come and book a call with us anyway, and we, may, we can go through exactly, I suppose, what you want to happen with the leave. If you wanted to go into 2023, or are you cutting it off for this year? Just to get a bit more clarity. So thank you, everybody. Um, sorry, I went a bit over time. Um, and like I said, anybody wants to get in contact with any of us here at the team, please feel free to, um, and we can go through any of your questions that you have in regards to closing off HR Locker for the end of 2022 and going into a fabulous 2023. So uh, talk to you all soon, and thank you very much for your time.